We are aware of this reality that our wrist exists among all other important joints. You can say that wrist joint have a hand in everything while performing our daily life activities. That is why our hands and wrist are more prone to injuries. Even one fourth of athletic injuries involve the hand and wrist. The reason behind this fact is that apart from hand and wrist, no other part is this much flexible to perform very fine and delicate movements of the body. I am Anusha and let's dive into the anatomy of the wrist joint. Our wrist is composed of various tiny bones and joints that help to move hands in several directions. These tiny bones are called carpals which are eight in number. We have a complete lecture about the anatomy of carpals separately as well. So look for the link in the description or head over to scadia.com anatomy section. But just as an overview, the carpal bones are named as scaphoid, lunate, trequetrum, and pisiform lying proximally, while trapezium, trapezoid, Capitate and hemet are lying distally. We also have a super easy mnemonic for you to help memorize these bones. Sally left the party to take Kathy home, where S stands for scaphoid, L stands for lunate, T stands for trequetrum, and P stands for pisiform. T again stands for trapezium, T stands for trapezoid. C stands for capitate and H stands for hemate. In addition to smaller joints between the different carpal bones, there are two main wrist joints. Proximal wrist joint, also called the radiocarpal joint, which is present on the thumb side. If you're confused about the location of radius, you can remember it as just do this and say this is rad, where your thumb is here at the location of the radius. So rad equals to radius. This proximal wrist joint is formed by the articulation of three carpal bones, which are scaphoid, leonate, and triquetrum with the radius. Distal wrist joint, also called the mid-carpal joint, is present between the proximal and distal row of carpal. In general language, the radiocarpal joint is usually termed as the primary wrist joint. You have to remember that both the proximal and distal wrist joint are a type of synovial joint and they allow a number of movements. These proximal and distal wrist joints are further supported by the involvement of certain accessory joints in our wrist region. Helping to ease the movements of our hands in multiple directions and allow it to rotate freely. These accessory joints are ulnocarpal joint, distal radio ulnar joint and intercarpal joint. So coming to the ulnocarpal joint. It is the point or the joint located on the little finger of wrist where ulna connects to two of the wrist bones including lunate and Triquetrum. Distal radio ulnar joint is the point that connects the ends of both radius and ulna, excluding all wrist bones, and known as a distal radio ulnar joint. Now, coming to intercarpal joint, these are the joints present between the individual carpal bones in the same row. Like this, we have a proximal intercarpal joint and the distal intercarpal joint. This lecture is not over yet. We are going to learn about the articulations formed by these joints, the ligaments that support it, along with the movements exhibited at this region, and the muscles that allow these movements. So stay tuned.